freedom to direct my own learning. I get to choose what I want to focus on a daily basis. I have my own goals, my own milestones that I can reach and discuss with staff. Really is a shift in the way that we're, we're focusing our medical education for our, uh, for our residents. We're moving away from a system where we're talking about objectives of training and objectives, a long list of objectives that we give to our clinician educators, to our residents and ask them to teach that. And rather what we're doing is we're looking at it from the opposite spectrum. We're looking at the competencies that we want our residents to achieve at the end of training and then building an education program that allows us to have those residents learn all of the things that they need and demonstrate those competencies so that they they are competent physicians in their given disciplines. Competency-based medical education I think is a really exciting new change in how we're looking at training the physicians of tomorrow. It addresses a lot of the challenges that we're currently seeing with time-based models and there's long been calls that we need to re-examine this and make the change. Instead now with competency-based medical education we're actually asking residents to demonstrate that they have achieved these competencies that we've deemed are important for physicians. A clear outline of uh, expectations for our learners um, which will guide the development of educational strategies we have for our learners and also guide the assessment. I think competency-based medical education um, means a shift from these time-based curricula where we assume that if you just put the time in you're good to go to being more accountable to um, the training that we offer people and, and to be more accountable to the end product after residency and after um, any stage of medical education really. So it's about making sure that the people that we're graduating are really ready for independent practice. An EPA is an entrustable professional activity, meaning it's something that um, somebody in your profession must be able to do independently without supervision. And so it's something that we can ask a resident to do when they become competent to do it. So for example, in anesthesiology, a resident might start an epidural independently. And so it's something that we can entrust them to do. A milestone is a small part of that. EPA, where we might say to start an epidural, you know, you have to know how to do sterile technique in a way that is safe and proper. So that milestone might be part of that EPA and we can judge milestones separately when we're building towards achieving that competency. Is it a huge shift? No. I think it's a different language. I think we're going to assess a little bit differently in there, but I don't think it's going to be as dramatic a shift as some people expect. I think trainees know when they're not great at something, they just want to know how they can get better and how they can improve and having the EPAs that we can unpackage into milestones will allow us to better target that trainee and show them what they need to improve upon. It's explicit. These are the goals you need to reach. This is what is expected of you and so for me this is really clear cut and I can direct my focus on reaching those milestones and becoming the best I can be. So I think that it will allow trainees to transition out of their specialty training far more internally stronger about their capacity than uh, we traditionally have seen. We've seen that there, there are problems in our current training system in our ability to, to do solid evaluations on our residents and evaluations that go beyond our own gut instinct of how a resident is doing. I think that the move to CBD is going to provide us, and this is the, many of these tools are still in development, but will provide us with much better tools to do more solid evaluations that are actually grounded in theory and in objectivity that we didn't have before, and ultimately is going to allow us to um, really assess residents in terms of their overall strengths and in areas in which they need, to, they need to improve in order to bring them up to the minimum competency that's expected of the profession and of society. I think the transition to CBD is very important uh, owing to the fact that the way that we currently provide medical education stems back 100 years from the Flexner reports. It's a model that's based on time wherein the residents uh, work within a block and hope to attain all the competencies of becoming a physician during that defined period of time. There is currently a demand through society that residents and physicians be more accountable for their training and to ensure that competencies are maintained from the start of their residency training all the way through to continuing professional development all the way into retirement. I think that the, you know, the specialty committees getting together and deconstructing the idea of what it means to be a proficient, in our case, surgeon, is important in and of itself and it's a learning process because that's never actually been done before. So to take it and sort of break it down into the necessary components. I like something that Jason Frank said once, that 
CBME is important because our patients deserve it. And the reason why I think our patients deserve it is because it's much better for us as physicians to be sure that our residents are performing as it's expected than that they know everything about any sort of issue. It will allow for standardization um, across uh, different residency programs and hospitals. Uh, specifically for my area in radiology, it, it can assure that all radiology residents are doing sufficient volumes of different types of studies and modalities to ensure that we're qualified uh, when we practice independently as a staff. I think another reason is that for some trainees are going to learn faster than others and so it may give us the opportunity to graduate trainees to sort of more, um, I guess, leadership roles earlier within the program and to be doing more stuff that you would expect of a senior resident earlier on in the program. Not necessarily graduating them earlier, but sort of graduating them forward and progressing faster. The thing that I find uh, most exciting is the fact that we've increased the frequency and the diversity of the different types of assessments that we're using for our learners. I think it gives uh, both them and us as educators a more holistic picture uh, of where they're at. The thing that I'm most excited about CBME is assessment for learning. I think that giving feedback or debriefing the learning experience, the clinical experience with the trainee is the most powerful tool of CBME. It allows the trainee, the learner, to take ownership of his own learning. And it also makes it very easier for the clinician teacher who is not an educator, who doesn't know anything about these blueprints and these abstract concepts, but who is very good at looking at a trainee and saying where they are at the progression of in, in the progression of the different milestones within an activity. I think it, it shifts everything back towards the trainee. So we'll be able to look at what is a particular um, area that we need to focus on to improve this trainee. Um, staff will understand better how to focus on providing feedback and provide that feedback to make trainees better. I think if we can focus on the learning needs of the individual trainee that will reduce better physicians in the long run and really I think that's what society is looking for. They want to ensure that we're training the best possible physician. We're not just making sure they hang around here for long enough.